You've probably seen many of the videos on our YouTube channel that are very complex DMEC, such as DMEC and aniridia athachia, or DMEC with fibrin in the AC. However, most of these surgeries are performed by surgeon Jack Parker, who is an excellent surgeon, but he also has this wealth of experience. He's probably performed 2 million DMEC surgeries, maybe not quite that many, but you get the picture. And so he has a lot more expertise, a lot more skill sets than me, or maybe many of you out there. And so I wanna walk you through kind of it from a, a newer DMEC surgeon's perspective of how I'm approaching DMEC 40 cases in, three months into my time here. And so let's jump into my about 40th case and see how it's go doing and how I'm thinking about things. And so first I'm making my incisions. And when I was first making my incisions um, as just getting started, I was doing them a little bit haphazardly, but now I'm doing them very intentionally with a certain size in mind. That first paracentesis that's used super nasally for the AC maintainer is one that I want to be a little bit shorter, a little bit not quite as wide as some of the incisions that I'm making closer where I'm using manipulation with the reverse Sinsky hook later in the case. And that's just where I get a better seal with the AC maintainer so that I'm not, it's not bubbling up around it, not having as much wound leak. And then after making those paracentesis, I put a little lidocaine in for further anesthesia. I'm also using my finger here instead of a second instrument as the backstop. It gives me great control over the eye instead of, and also where I'm not having to pass off another instrument. After filling the eye with air, I'm putting the reverse Sinsky hook in. And then I've learned quite a few tips about the decimate erexus to make things smoother. The first is engaging and staying in the very far periphery. And so I start not as peripheral as I'd like, but here I get way out near the limbus, but I don't want to engage in the angle because if you engage in the angle, sometimes you can have bleeding. But if you're too far from the limbus centrally, then you're going to have these peripheral fragments that you're dealing with later in the case. And also when you're doing this scoring, you want it to be very gentle. It's not really digging into the decimate erexus. It's really just tracing this area, tracing it in as much of a uniform motion as you can make it, and then very, very gently doing it. And then so starting out here laterally, kind of pulling in a gentle motion, and then really trying to make these smooth movements. I'm not trying to really tease at it much or paw at it, really just gently pulling in as few motions as I can and really taking what is given to me. It's like not trying to do anything in a premeditated systematic way, but whatever the decimate erexus gives me is what I'm gonna take so that it's, it comes off more easily. And so you're seeing areas that it's, I'm not really getting it that easily, so I'm just going to a different area and it's, that comes off easily. So it's really taking what's given. Around the AC maintainer, I'm wanting to make sure that all of this is coming off in one sheet. And so you can see here, it's not breaking apart into multiple pieces. If it starts breaking apart in multiple pieces, I consider moving the AC maintainer to a different location so that I am um, not leaving any fragments around that paracentesis. Now this is a phacic eye, so it's very important to make sure that this chamber is staying formed and that this um, shaft of the reverse Sinsky hook isn't coming into contact with that central iris or the anterior lens capsule, because in that, those situations you can easily form posterior sneakii or an anterior subcapsular cataract. And so making sure it's formed and that you're not touching those tissues because it can cause post-operative issues. And if you do feel like you're coming into close contact with those, you can really go into the other paracentesis and have a different vantage point so that you're not having to interact with the, the central lens or the central part of the eye if it's wanting to shallow. And then here, really making sure I'm keeping everything in one piece, because if I keep everything in one piece during the decimate erexus, it makes removing it easier. I'm not dealing with these tiny fragments. Um, and one thing you saw here is I really did most everything through the right-handed wound, um, including kind of stripping away from the areas right at this paracentesis. Sometimes that can be a little bit awkward and probably what I should have done was gone in with my left hand and really um, got the decimates membrane from that area so that I'm not, not leaving residual fragments there. And so let's get restarted back here. And then so I'm pulling it all out this one big lump of decimase membrane 
Um, but since I wasn't using my left hand for that sub-incisional area of the paracentesis, you can still see some fragments there. Um, this was just a small fragment that I pulled out. But right over here underneath this right-handed paracentesis, there is a little bit more uh, decimase membrane fragments peripherally that I'm going to need to remove with the scraper. Um, and so here, going back in with the Mellis scraper, and this is something that's really nice to get some of these peripheral fragments. I kind of, if you notice here, I'm really trying to do almost this S-shaped movement. And so digging down to get those fragments, then pulling centrally so that I can more easily pull it straight out of the wound. If I pull it directly towards the wound, a lot of times those fragments end up just being crowded into the angle and even harder to see. Um, and so pulling things centrally, and you see here I'm going in with the reverse Sinsky hook, the same thing. It's instead of really trying to tease things, I'm just really trying to push in gentle motions and push these fragments up centrally so that I can grab them with the scraper or grab them with some other instrument and pull them out of the eye. Again, fewer motions, less teasing, just really um, getting things centrally so that I can more easily pull it out. Um, because this area over here, I wasn't quite as peripheral as I probably should have been when I was doing the initial scoring. There are some um, residual fragments that I'm like I'm wanting to remove just to make it where it's a little bit more peripheral so that I have a little bit bigger landing zone later on when I'm unfolding the graft and so they're um, removing a few pieces there's still probably one or two little pieces over here that I'm wanting to do and again just engaging and pulling things centrally I'm not wanting to just trace the the limbus here. I'm wanting to get them centrally so that I can more easily pull it out through the main wound. And so I feel like I've gotten a, done a pretty good job with the decimate erexus. Everything is removed that I want removed. And then so going in now with some more lidocaine, injecting it. One thing that I've learned here is to make sure not to inject directly at the air bubble because if you inject directly at the air bubble, it's going to turn it into a million bubbles and then removing it, it becomes much more challenging. And then so injecting around it and then removing it all as one bubble. And then now putting our AC maintainer in with fluid um, so that the chamber is formed where we can make our peripheral iridotomy. And again, we make our peripheral iridotomy using a capsulotomy device that's attached to an Ertley FACO machine. Uh, a little bit different than probably most of you make it. Um, it's a little, it's a cautery device. And then here, in residency, you learn a lot about not I'm floating in wounds and not putting pressure on your wounds when you're doing cataract surgery. This is a little bit larger, awkward device, and so really learning to kind of float in the wound here, starting peripherally, getting through the iris, and then just dragging a little bit centrally so that I get a good peripheral iridotomy that I can um, use to avoid pupillary block. And then so now removing that AC maintainer, I'm wanting to go in and remove a lot of these excess air bubbles because I'm about to start the graft unfolding. And then so there's a lot of bubbles here. Mm. So you see I shoot some more air bubbles into the eye. And so this is really highlighting the point when you're injecting more fluid after, especially after you've been aspirating air previously, before you go in, really wanting to make sure that that fluid is out, or make sure that that air is out of your BSS cannula before you go in to inject some more. Otherwise, you're gonna be injecting air again. And then so making sure at this point, this chamber is deepenable, um, because if the wounds aren't sealing at this point, you probably wanna hydrate some because the, the chamber needs to be formed during graft unfolding. You see here, there's a couple little bubbles. I'm not worried about removing those at this point because a lot of times when you inject the graft here, um, air bubbles in insert. And so after injecting this graft, here I probably could have injected uh, removed the air bubbles, but I decided not to. Um, here, I do want to point out a couple of things because during the surgery here, I thought, oh, this looks like it's a double roll in right side open orientation. But I do want to highlight that this is actually upside down and we'll see that later in the case. Um, because you can look here very carefully at the folded margins. Uh, they're a little bit blurred. They're usually a little bit more crisp and clean margins if you're looking at looking down at it if it's a right side up folded graph because the scrolls are on top. When the scrolls are underneath, those margins can be a little bit blurred. And even in 3D here, I thought this was right side up, but I was a little bit fooled this time. And so I'm going in, showering it, 
putting taps right on the center, unfolding it, thinking, okay, I'm almost done with this case. And here, really also should have known that this orientation mark is the other way, but right here, stop, I recognized it. Oh no, this graft is upside down. But other things that you can see in this situation is along the edges of this graft where it is unfolded, there's, they're curled in just a little bit. And that's because they're coming in contact with the iris and they're curling under. So that should also be um, really things that you can hone in on to see, oh, this graft is upside down, even if you're not seeing the orientation marker. And so at this point, I know I've got to flip this graft. This is a fake eye. It's a little bit shallower. This graft is already unfolded. So this is a I put myself in a little bit of a difficult position because this is one of the more challenging situations to flip a graft. And so I'm going to go in on my right side paracentesis. And the goal is to gently flip the graft in a controlled manner. Again, as I told you before, I didn't learn my lesson the first time. I injected air again. Now I've got to go in take out these air bubbles so that I can better better flip the graft. And then so going in here, not really getting good vantage point through the paracentesis, so going through the main wound, removing this air bubble that's now on top of the graft. Now after this has been removed, making sure that the air is now out of the BSS cannula, but then going in, I want to put the BSS underneath the graft and do these little staccato bursts and like and then you can see in a very controlled way that graph flips over. And we can see that instead of the graph just spinning and spinning and spinning, it just flipped once. And then I, let me go back just for a second. And then so it just flipped once. And then now I feel like it's right side up, really a double roll situation. I shallow the chamber by going through the main wound and you can see the attractive forces that closer edge really unfolds a little bit better. Now it's a little bit shallower. I can easily tap out those edges. And so as I'm tapping them out, doing them in all the directions, and then shuffling that graft over so that I can get a little bit more central and untap or tap out that last edge. And then here you can see the orientation mark super nasally pointing clockwise. So knowing that the graft for sure is right side up. This graft is shifted a little bit superior in nasally, which is actually probably a good thing because in that situation, it's not interacting with the main wound. And if it's shifted a little bit superiorly, it makes it where if you have to rebubble things in clinic, it makes it where it's easier to get the, the, the new wound and the rebubbling in place. And so this patient, um, we now lift the graft with an air bubble, making sure that everything's at the appropriate um, have the appropriate meniscus on the outside and the appropriate pressure of the eye. And then the case is really concluded at this point. So in this video, I've really highlighted a lot of the tips and tricks that I've learned over the last few months. But stay tuned for some more short form videos that really highlight each of these individual tricks. Thanks for watching.